I would like to welcome you to lecture 9 of 2FH3. We will continue our discussion today of the electric flux density, Gauss law, applications of Gauss law. And uh, we will cover today chapter 4, pages 126 to 137. In previous lectures, we talked about the electric field, and uh, we have shown that the electric field resulting from uh, a point charge is given by this expression. It depends on the value of the charge, the square of the distance from the charge to the observation point, or the field point as we call it, and uh, multiplied by unit vector pointing from the charge to the observation point. The problem with the electric field as a, as a quantity is that it is material dependent. Because you can see for every material, for every different type of material, epsilon will be different. We usually use epsilon to be that of free space, but uh, Epsilon is different in wood, is different in water, is different in, in fat cells, it's, it's different for every type of material. So we prefer to have a, a quantity, an electric quantity, which is independent of the uh, material. And this is why we can define the, uh, the vector D, and you'll see very soon uh, the, it, 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 has, it plays a very important role in electromagnetism. So D is equal to Epsilon E. So D is a scaled version of E. So when you multiply by epsilon, epsilon will cancel with epsilon the denominator and end up with d equal to q over 4 by r squared in the r direction. So d is calculated in the same way as we calculate e, uh, still pointing from the, uh, so this is your charge, q here, and this is your observation point. d will be in the line, along the line connecting both of them to this ar here, and it will, it, it will be inversely proportional to the distance r. But the great thing about D is that there is no material dependence, as you could see here. Um, and uh, for, of course, in vacuum, as we agreed before, epsilon is equal to epsilon naught, 1 over 36 by 10 to the minus 9. And everything that we have derived so far for electric field can be applied here as well. So if you have a certain volume with a volumetric charge density rho v, you can divide this volume into small differential elements. Each one of them has a charge dq equal to v dv. And then you apply column law, and then you integrate over the volume as shown here to get the total um, uh, electric flux density vector. The vector d, you should keep in mind, it has units of column per meter squared. If you, if you work out the, uh, the units on both sides, it's column per meter squared. So this is why when you multiply it by meter squared, so when you integrate it over an area, it gives you column. This is very important, as you will see later. So uh, keep in mind, the electric field is in volt per meter. This, the units here are volt per meter. If you multiply by epsilon, because of the units of epsilon, you get D, which should be column per meter squared. All laws of superposition, or, or the law of superposition, do apply as well to D. We have seen before that if you have a number of discrete charges, then the electric field resulting from these discrete charges given by this expression here. So what we do, we find the, the field resulting from H from the nth charge, it is the value of this charge, divided by the modulus, uh, the, the modulus squared of the distance between this charge and your observation point, in the direction of the unit vector pointing from the charge to the observation point. And what you do, you sum all these contributions, and of course, 1 over, five, 1 over 4 by epsilon is a common term. <clears throat> you do exactly the same thing for D, but the only difference is that epsilon is missing. So you can see epsilon here, because D is equal to epsilon E, and it's, it eliminates simply the, the, the epsilon term, and this would be the, the vector, the electric uh, flux density vector D, resulting from a discrete distribution of charge. We before got an expression for the field resulting from a linear charge of finite length, always infinite length. Uh, this is the expression for finite length. It's the same one we got for electric field, but epsilon in the denominator has been removed, as you could see here. The same thing applies for the field resulting from a uniform charge. Uh, we have infinite billion with uniform charge rho s. D, e was equal to rho s over 2 by epsilon in the normal direction to the plane. We talked about this earlier, so if you have a plane like this, and it has a uniform charge all over it, okay, it's distributed over the plane, it's an infinite plane, then the electric field here is in this direction, electric field here is in this direction. Uh, and the difference between D and E, as you can see, is, is the ratio of epsilon. Electric field has epsilon denominator, while D does not have uh, epsilon in the denominator.
the electric flux then the electric flux through a service is uh, is very similar to uh, the service integrals we talked about before during the vector analysis part and uh, if you if you consider a tiny service element like this part of a service this is a service here and this is a tiny service element and you want to obtain the flux the electric flux electric flux by definition is equal to d dot ds you multiply by the area ve area vector of this differential element and as we know the area vector is normal to the area in the normal direction and its magnitude is the area itself so this is what we call the differential flux flowing through this differential element this by definition and you notice d is in column per meter squared and this is an area so when you multiply column per meter squared by meter squared you get column so the electric flux has units of column very Im important to keep this in mind now if we have any service and we want to calculate the total flux through that service what we do is simply carry out an integration over that service of d dot ds and the, the result will be in column and this will tell us how how much flux is going through this service finally if we have a closed service and the closed service as we agreed on before it's a service that encloses a volume like a, like the service of a sphere it's enclosing the volume of the sphere um, then you do exactly the same thing and get the total flux flowing out from that service and we have done before in this course we have done service integrals we have done closed service integrals the flux lines uh, when we usually draw them they show us the direction and density of the flux which is really related to direction uh, and density of the our strength of the electric field so uh, so here we could see a high density area lower density area you could see the flux lines are bending the electric field can be can have complicated shape depending on the um, on the profile of the charges that created that field so electric flux over a closed service is a very important uh, tool we use very often because it actually it's actually a measure of the charge or the electric sources actually here this in this case it charges within that enclosed and within that service so for example here take a look at this figure you have a, a closed service and the flux lines are diverging diverging from that volume they are all flowing out this tells us that the total flux coming out from here must be positive why because if you try to see if you try, do, draw the normal at any point if you for example come at this point and you um, you draw the normal here so if I do that something like this this is the normal to the surface you can see the flux lines makes an angle is a very very small angle with this normal to the surface so this means the flux is positive because it's equal to d dot ds so if the angle between d and ds is small or less than 90 degrees the contribution will be positive so this will tell you that the total flux from out of this service is positive and this tells us that this uh, this volume is a source it creates positive flux which means that there are charges inside there must be charges inside the other way the other example is the example of the sink or the negative flux you can see all the electric flux lines or the electric field lines are uh, converging converging to this volume so now if you try to do the line integral again if you draw the normal to the service here uh, sorry the service integral you see that the normal to the service makes an angle greater than 90 with the flux lines so the flux lines are pointing this way the angle between them is greater than 90 this tells you that you are summing negative contributions over over the surface of this enclosed volume which makes which means that your total flux will be a negative number so here this epsilon over this surface will be negative and this tells us that we have negative charge inside because electric field lines terminate or negative charge they converge to negative charges uh, the third case that you can get and it has two examples one of them is more related to electrostatics this one here when there is no charge inside the volume the flux flowing in is equal to the flux flowing out so here in this part you'll have negative flux because the flux lines are converging to the surface and here you have positive flux because the flux lines are diverging from the surface and the total flux over the closed surface will be zero another example of a case that would create zero flux when the field lines are tangential to the surface so 
um, D is normal to DS. So if we try to draw DS at any point, it will be this way. And it, but this is the direction of the field, so they are normal to each other. It does not create any flux, and in that case, there is no, there is no flux out from the surface. Both both these cases. Now let's take a look at this example just to remind you of the of the how we calculate the flux. We did something similar. We did many examples similar to that before. Uh, we have here a cylinder of of radius a, and um, here I did not mention, but it has a finite length, so you can take the length to be l, say. Uh, the electric field uh, E is given on the surface as A sine phi A rho. So the electric field is in the rho direction. It's pointing outward from the cylinder. But it changes with every point as sine phi. And we'd like to determine the, the total the outward electric flux from that cylinder. So, of course, we start first by drawing a diagram, as we, as we agreed on, just to help us understand how the problem looks like. So here, um, this is the expression for d dot ds because the electric field is in the root direction at any point. Uh, the integral over the closed surface, this closed surface, will give you here only an integral on the side wall. Because in the top and bottom surfaces, the unit area, if you try to see the unit area here, you'll see it in the z direction. But, uh, but the electric field is totally in the root direction, so um, d dot ds will give you zero. Remember, D is in the same direction as E. So when I talk about the direction of E, I'm talking as well about the direction of uh, uh, D. It's e and D, they, are, they have the same direction. So uh, this means that if in order to carry out this integral, the, the, the integral over this closed surface is simply the integral over the sidewall. And we, as we agreed, because this is the surface of a cylinder, this part here will be rho d phi. This part here is equal to dz, and rho here is a constant. Rho is equal to the radius of the, of the cylinder, which is equal to a. a can be anything, one meter, two meter, half a meter. It's simply a number, okay? So now we are ready to carry out this integral. So d, first we get d. d is equal to epsilon naught e. So we get epsilon naught e. So it's going to be, uh, you multiply the given e by epsilon naught. ds is, is in the same direction as d, because both will be in the rho direction. And the value of ds is rho d phi dz in the rho direction. So we carry out this integral here. As I said, d is equal to epsilon e, but unless otherwise stated, epsilon is equal to epsilon naught. This is a e that we have a sine phi. And uh, we carry out this integral here. Uh, so the integral on the side uh, is equal to integral from 0 to L, the length of the cylinder, from 0 up to 2 by a sine a epsilon naught sine phi dz d phi. Nothing here is a function of z, so I can simply multiply by L, the upper limit. The integral of sine phi over the from 0 to 2 by will give us 0, will give us cosine phi. The area over the cosine over a complete cycle is equal to 0. So what mean what this means here is that uh, for this cylinder, if you if you try if you if I try to do uh, have a top view of the cylinder, this is a top view of the cylinder. Um, and this is say x, and this is y here. Because the electric field changes as sine x, as sine x, and it is in the root direction. Uh, this simply will tell you that we have electric positive. Uh, we have here positive flux here, positive flux here, positive flux here, positive flux here, up to phi equal to pi. And then we have negative flux here, negative flux here, and negative flux here for all angle phi between pi and 2 pi. So, so the net flux is zero here, as I explained uh, earlier. And this is one of the cases uh, where um, you don't really get a net flux, but some other cases we get a positive flux or a negative flux.